engineering and agricultural plant science. He's now going to present the work on pixel-wise classification of weeds and crop in image by using a fully convolutional neural network. Well, thank you. Yes, um, I did this uh, project together with uh, these gentlemen, and I'll start by showing you some of the results just to get you uh, an idea of what it is that you want to achieve. So given an um, input image like the one that you can see to the top, we want the computer to predict for each pixel what that given pixel is. So in this case, we want the computer to tell us which pixels are uh, soil, which pixels are wheat, and which pixels are the crops. In this case, it's maize that we're looking at. So for instance, maize is colored green and wheat are blue. The reason why we want to do this is that for some uh, precision agricultural machineries, uh, this is very important to know the exact position of, uh, of your uh, weeds and your crops. So for instance, for the mechanical weeder or for uh, the uh, precision sprayer. But it can also be used to estimate uh, the wheat investment level so that you know in which part of the field that you have a high, uh, high uh, wheat pressure or it could be used to uh, determine the sizes of your crops so that you know uh, how to distribute your nutrition for this field. So now the question is how do we get from this uh, picture uh, to the left and make the computer predict the image to the right? Uh, we use a convolution neural network uh, for this and the big problem with these convolution neural networks is that they are driven by data. And if you want to train the, the network to learn how to uh, make this segmentation, you need a lot of training data. And making this uh, by hand is quite painful, as Mike Wilson said before. So, for instance, for images like this, I spent several hours just to manually segment all pixels in it. So, instead of doing this manually, we came up with the idea of making an simulation of images instead and use that for training. So the general idea is that we got a lot of uh, images of segmented uh, weeds and crops and then we have some images from, of uh, bare soil. And if we then take these plants one by one and put them on top of this uh, soil image and update our uh, ground truth image at the same time, we can simulate uh, these <coughs> images from the field. Uh, when we do this, we can rotate the, the crops and the weeds so that we get a uh, lot more data. The thing about convolutional neural networks is that they are not rotational environment, and so by doing this, we can simulate a uh, lot of more samples. And we can also change the lighting to uh, simulate different uh, stresses to the, to the weeds so that in that way we also increase our data set. But we can continue on plotting these which is on top of the soil and finally the, the maize plant. And when we do this, we do not limit uh, the, the plants group position in uh, uh, special areas in the image. We can plot them wherever we want. So in this case, we, for instance, get the crop on top of a weeds, and that's okay. We actually want our network to learn to handle these cases where the plants overlap each other. So, in total we have 301 soil images, and these soil images can be rotated, rotated and flipped so that we increase our uh, number of, uh, of soil images eightfold. And then we have 8,430 images of segmented uh, uh, weeds and crops, and these uh, images contain uh, 23 different weed species, and then of course maize. And then we just ask the computer, just set the computer to generate a lot of data for us. So in total, we generate 3,463 images for training, like the ones that you can see here to the right. Uh, now for the training part. Uh, we use a network by a long uh, all, which is a network that is inspired by the VDD 16 network from Cyanion and Sysaman. And this network is, well, originally it was used just to uh, label uh, data, but, but here, uh, long and all, it changed the, 
the last fully connected layers to convolutional layers so that they get uh, images as output instead of just uh, single labels. This uh, network uh, contains uh, 16 uh, convolutional layers and then in between these layers there are uh, five pooling layers, as you can see. Each of these pooling layers uh, are, uh, the, these pooling layers are uh, two times two uh, max pooling layers, which means that the feature map is, uh, is scaled down by a factor of two for each pooling layer. So in total we get uh, two to the power of five uh, uh, scaling factor, so 32 uh, downscaling, which means that in the end the output does not correspond to the input size. And we want the one pixel in the output to correspond to one pixel in the input. So therefore we upscale the image uh, in the case. <coughs> because of these, uh, these pooling layers, uh, we missed some of the details in the original image. So therefore, uh, two shortcuts are introduced from pooling layer 3 and pooling layer 4, where we can pull some of the final details to the, uh, to the uh, end of the network so that we keep some of these important details that we, we want to keep. When we train this network, we start by using uh, Pascal Log for pre-training. Pascal Log is a data set of segmented images, so we use that to just get the network started and initializing all the weights, and then we could afterwards fine-tune on these images that we generate uh, using the simulation technique that I just described. And uh, then, normally when you train such a network, you run through several epochs, and while you create the epoch, update your, uh, your weights in the network. But because we are able to uh, generate our own data, there's really no reason to reuse some of the images. We could just generate new training data. So we only have one long epoch where we keep updating our uh, weights during the training. So now for the results. This is an example uh, of uh, image from Maysfield. It's taken using a handheld camera, uh, and this image contains 121 uh, wheat plants and then two mice plants, <coughs> maize plants. And as you can see, the maize plants are, uh, are overlapping the weeds. Um, and now let's take a look at the output of the network. The output of the network, or of the softmax layer of the network, is shown here, bottom left, where each color uh, shows how much the network believes that the given pixel is uh, soil and wheat and crop. So the amount of red means that uh, how much it believes that it is soil. And then after doing a non-max suppression of this image, we get the image bottom right, which you can compare to the ground truth hand segmented image above. And you can see that we get a quite high uh, accuracy, actually it's 98.3%. Uh, and the intersection over unit for the crops is uh, 0.93, and for the weeds, 0.79, and for the soil, it's 0.98. And actually, we detected all the weeds, even though that some of the edges is a little rough. You can zoom in and take a look at one of the maize plants, and as you can see, as I said, the edges they are a little rough, but it's quite close actually to the ground truth image. And you can see that some of the weeds are missing uh, some of the stems, which is probably due to this uh, downscaling used by, from these uh, pooling layers and then the upscaling. So the network simply misses some of these smaller details, but still it detects the, the weeds. Another example, which is a little harder, we have uh, this image from uh, they're taking using a moving uh, vessel, and <coughs> there was a, a shading so that you get a nice lighting on these images. But as you can see, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of occlusion in this image, and the base plant is small compared to the image that I showed you showed before. And you can also see that the base is a little stressed; it's uh, yellow, and uh, well, yeah, the the Weeds are also a little harder to, to detect here actually because they are reddish in the stems. But still, the network is actually able to uh, detect the maze, but it also uh, detects one of the leaves of the weeds and 
think that this is uh, actually a mixed plan. So we get this uh, one um, false positive in this detection. But still, it's uh, quite close to the original uh, handsome image that we see at the top right here. The accuracy for this image is 94.4% uh, and the section or union is a little lower than before but still uh, quite high to get for crops it's 0.71, for the wheat it's 0.70 and for the soil it's 0.93. So if you should uh, continue working on this we should move on to some uh, zero. Uh, Fields, I think, because zero fields used to be quite hard because of uh, all the overlapping plants. Uh, so this will definitely be very helpful if we were able to actually segment all the weeds in such cases. Moreover, it will also be useful if we are able to detect uh, or distinguish the different weeds from each other. So that instead of only saying it's weeds, we can also uh, tell which species all the individual weed plants are. So that's part of the future work. So to conclude, uh, this network has been trained solely on uh, simulated images, but still is able to actually detect maize and weeds in real images. So this is definitely a, a useful approach. All the weeds have been detected in the images, uh, and we achieved quite high uh, accuracy, which is for these cases more than 94%. And finally, uh, this uh, product is, uh, is sponsored by uh, UPP under the Danish uh, Ministry of Food and Fishery. Thank you. Thank you. Another question? Yes, please. Uh, what's the processing time for uh, an image? Uh, for one image, uh, one megapixel image is around 400 milliseconds using a GPU. Which thing? Uh, a Tizen X GPU. Try to simulate images taken from the same same height, so uh, but I use different uh, growth stages uh, from small sprout to actually quite large plants. So it should be able to handle it actually. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I haven't really t uh, been able to take different scales of images. It's simulated from the same height. Did you test the classification by FVM method? To discriminate uh, the different uh, crops uh, and which? <coughs> did, did you test SVM support vector machine uh, di di discrimination to, to discriminate? And uh, if you do, uh, what uh, what are the, the results? It's hard to distinguish different weeds from this. Ah, support vector machine method classification by SVM uh, method. To discriminate the different weeds yeah, instead of neural network. Uh, if I try different approaches, uh, yeah. different and, approaches. Uh, I haven't I haven't used different approaches for this semantic segmentation. Uh, I used uh, for single weeds uh, classification, but not uh, this pixel wise classification. I haven't used other approaches. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you're using neural network, your images. Um, the weeds and the crops are very size dependent. Mm -hmm. um, you think yes, uh, if you have more complex image with uh, more confuse between the weeds and the crops, is also efficient your method? Uh, because I, when when I see the image, you can do the same with a simple approach. Well, if you take a look at this one, for instance, uh, it's more complex. Yes. Uh, but the base is not that much bigger, actually, than the weeds, and it's uh, occluded. Yes, but 
with a textual approach, you separate the wins and the crops. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so my question is, what's the efficiency of neural networks when we have a very difficult image? Because uh, when you have um, when you have an image with a very thin uh, object, you separate. It's working fine, but it's working fine with all those methods. My question: What's the efficiency of neural networks when you have a very complex image? Because in reality, the image is very complex. Yeah, but uh, I'm saying I, I've tested on. Uh, and other images also more complex images, but I haven't segmented these images, so I don't have the numbers, I just see that it's trying out to work also on other images, but I have, don't have the numbers I like, how how well it works. Okay, thank you. So, thank you.